Hey guys, Shane Sorens with DrawerMotorX.com. Today I have the unique privilege of introducing to you a ROM by Nitroglycerin33. You guys know him as the developer of the Eclipse ROM series. He has totally scrapped that ROM series and he has developed an entirely new ROM series that goes by Elemental X. So if you guys remember, the Eclipse ROM series was mostly a jet black inverted ROM. This is more of an AOSP ROM. It still has some very dark elements in the ROM, uh, but it is not jet black like before. Now if you wanted to go back to that Eclipse look and feel with a jet black inverted theme, uh, he does have the Eclipse toggle here and you can just toggle that on. Or if you prefer the lighter theme you could toggle that off. So we'll go into About Phone. Uh, it is Android 4.2.2. The build number is Elemental version 1.0. So the first thing you're going to notice about this ROM is just how fast and smooth it operates. Uh, it is built on AOSP 4.2.2, so it is fast and it functions well. Comes with Wi-Fi tethering enabled, right out of the box. And then as you see here, there's plenty of customization options. So we'll jump into general UI. You can change your carrier label, you can change the transparency settings, you can add notification shortcuts. So when you drop down, it adds a couple of applications there. Uh, we'll just add a few. You can add up to 16. But I'll just add a few to show you guys how it works. So I'll add the camera and I'll add the torch. And now when I pull down, there they are. So it makes things just easy to access. Uh, you can change the UI mode here. If you do that, you're going to have to first enable the navigation buttons. And then you'll be able to go to, say, tablet mode, like so. Okay, and there's some more settings here. You have the Pi controls. If you turn these on, you'll have to turn off the navigation buttons first for that to work. So we'll go back to navigation, turn that off, and then we'll enable the Pi controls so I can show you guys how that works. Pi controls have been very popular. They've even made their way to Cyanogen Mod 10. Uh, so, of course, Nitro couldn't leave them out of his ROM. Uh, we'll go ahead and enable those, and that way you can see how that works. There's plenty of settings here. You can change the colors, you can change the size, uh, you can change the gravity so you can pull them in from the right side or the left side or the top. Several options for the Pi controls. Then you have some other settings here. You can change the LCD density, you can change the dual panel mode, and then you can change your CRT on and off. In the status bar, you can change your battery icon style. I prefer the skinny with percent, but you can change it. Uh, however you like there. If you change it to the circle you have some color options there. You can change the clock and date and make the clock disappear. You can change the alignment and the color. You can add and remove the A and PM and also the date. And you can enable notification counts so that when a notification does drop in, uh, say it's an email, you'll see how many emails that you have. It does include the theme chooser, and I'll show you guys real quick how that works to apply a theme on the fly. You guys see how quickly it applies the theme, like so. So we'll go back to our Elemental X theme. Notification LEDs, now this is really useful. Uh, because as you can see, you can enable different applications that have notifications and when those notifications come in, it'll show a different LED color. So like for Gmail, I have red. For talk, I have green. And for missed phone calls, I have purple. That way I know when the light is on, I know exactly what I missed. So obviously a phone call would be more important than say responding to a Gmail or a Gtalk would be more important than responding to a Gmail. You have several lock screen settings here. You can change the sliders. Uh, you can change the widget. You can add battery status to the lock screen. Uh, there's some screen security options there. You can change the background of the wallpaper for your lock screen. You can add different shortcuts. And you can choose to use the widget carousel. In the navigation, if you chose to enable the nav bar, uh, this would be great for modifying the navigation bar on say the Galaxy Nexus or one of the tablets. On the Note 2 I don't find it as useful because I already have hardware keys and the nav bars you know it ends up taking up part of the screen real estate so I generally don't use it on my Note 2 since I do have the hardware keys uh, but if you did enable those you would be able to customize them. 
the first thing I would do if I was going to use it on this phone is I would change the height. I would change the height like so to give myself more screen real estate and then of course you can change the buttons here what they do like so. So another cool thing that they have here is the nav ring and you can edit that as well. You can choose up to five navering targets. And then when you go into navering options, you can add applications. To your navering like so. So that is a pretty cool feature. There are some power menu options, so you can add screenshot into your power menu. You also have a reboot menu from the power screen. You can go into recovery or download mode. Toggles, if you enable those, you'll have pull down toggles here. Uh, those are more of the old style pull down toggles. You can change the buttons, there's several to choose from. You can change the order. Uh, I choose not to have the toggles enabled since we do have the quick tiles. You can also change the quick tile, so you can enable and disable toggles here. There are several to choose from. When you add one, it will show up there. Like so. You can change the order and also how many per row, and you can enable fast toggle. Okay, and then there are some launcher settings here. Uh, this is the same as the Cyanogen Mod 10 launcher. You can change the number of home screens and set a default screen. You can take away the persistent search bar. You can add a transition effect. And that is about all for the customization options in this ROM. Now you do have some advanced settings here. And one thing that you should keep in mind about this ROM is that it is based on AOSP, so if you're running it on a device like the Galaxy Note 2 or the Galaxy S3, it's not going to include any TouchWiz features, especially on the Note 2. I know that a lot of people, uh, they enjoy the S Pen functionality. You're not going to have that with this ROM. One thing that I missed in this ROM from TouchWiz is the one-handed operation, although I was able to find an application called Thumb Keyboard. I'll probably do an in-depth review of that. But what it enables is one-handed operation of the keyboard here. So you see I have that all nice and neat. For the big display, I really need that. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the Elemental X ROM. We're going to go ahead and install it. And then I'll show you guys the boot animation. So we'll reboot to recovery. You need to make sure that you download the Elemental X ROM and the G apps. You can find those below the like button. They're in the description. Okay, so to install this ROM, you can install it over Clockwork Mod Recovery or Team Win Recovery Project. Uh, you will, however, need to be rooted and unlocked. And you'll just wipe. Factory Reset, swipe to wipe. Cache, swipe to wipe. Davit Cache, swipe to wipe. Then you'll install. First, you're going to install the Elemental X. Swipe to flash. And then you'll... Go ahead and install the G apps. I have links to those in the description. Swipe to flash. After those install, you'll simply reboot the device. And I'll leave you guys with the boot animation. This is the boot animation from the Nexus 7, the Galaxy Nexus that you guys are all familiar with. He's included that in the Elemental X ROM. But anyways, guys, if you have liked this video review, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more coverage like this on the Galaxy Note 2 and other devices that I cover. You can find more of me at DroidModerX.com where I'll have the latest in Android and tech news. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at DroidModerX. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.